Okay, so a simplified, very, very simplified explanation of the speed of time. Now, some people are like, well, speed can't have time, you know, time can't have a speed because anything with the speed has a gravity, but if you think about it, time has an infinite gravity and everything that exists is being pulled along with time and exists in time, so it's weighted in place on time, you know, if we weren't weighted to time infinitely we would escape time and bounce around and you know that would cause problems not only physically but mentally because you know if you know things that are going to happen in the future and um it's kind of you know you don't know exactly when they're going to happen you just know that they're going to happen at some point so you know if you've experienced something in the future and then eventually it comes on so i remember thinking that and it's like you know that if you could remember absolutely everything, being completely unhooked from time, that would just drive you completely insane. But, you know, the odd memory here and there of bits of the future, even then, you know, you know it's going to happen, but you don't know exactly when it's going to happen. You know that, for example, they're going to have brown hair, and get back in touch, and, yeah, it's like, and other things. So, you know, but then again, to know the future is to change the future. So if you know the future, you know, Maybe you've put steps in place to try and ensure that future, but through doing that you've changed the future, or maybe you know a future that you're trying to avoid, and through trying to avoid the future you actually create the future, and if you didn't know about the future, then, well, you know, that future might not have ever happened. So there are a few different examples of why that is very dangerous. But, you know, we're not going to focus on, you know, precognition, we're focusing on the actual concept of time travel. Right, so many people think it's the speed of light. So point A, I should label it A, to point B. Right, so if you're travelling to point B many, many, many light years away, at the speed of light, it would perceive as though you're travelling through time, because obviously point B is already so far away that it's actually what you're seeing at point A is in the past. And travelling at the speed of light, it would look like everything's going backwards in time, but that's only because point B is actually in the future to what we're seeing anyway. So by the time you get there, yes, it would look like everything has gone back in time to what you saw. No, it would work the other way, wouldn't it? You'd be going forwards. Yeah, so it would be going forward in time, but that's just because you're moving close to it anyway, and, you know, Earth would perceive as though it's frozen. But that's only because, you know, light speeds, everything, you're travelling at the same speed that the light's emanating out, so it would perceive so it's frozen. But by the time you've actually travelled back to point A, it'd be going the other way. So, you know, it'll all catch up with you again. Now, people would perceive that as travelling through time, but it is not, because all the time you're travelling to point B and travelling back, point A is still revolving, point A is still going on. But, if you go point A, a to point B and back at two times the speed of light, theoretically you would be arriving at point A at the same point that you left. But you then also have to account for the amount of time that you've travelled and the distance you've travelled. So that still wouldn't be quite enough at two times the speed of light to actually travel through time because unless you could instantly do it without moving you would not be travelling through time, because the time and distance calculation would also need to be taken into account. Now, there are black holes which suck up all the light in the universe, and are still existing in our space-time, so clearly, you know, that is not the speed of time. So, I don't know what the fastest black hole is, but I think it's, um, probably, it's over two times the speed of light, at least. Um, it might be even more, but, you know, there's distortions there in a gravitational distortion where at the centre it is going to be like a microscopic atom that is the weight of everything it's ever absorbed and then you know if two of those ever got together and cancelled out then obviously it create a big bang because the, the two microscopic atoms of an infinite weight colliding would cause a rather tremendous explosion and would expose all that matter everywhere big bang style so you know it can happen eventually um, but, you know, you would have to travel faster than the fastest black hole, and faster than two times the speed of light, plus whatever time it takes to travel, in order to go. And then you've got the complications of not only 
travelling at that speed with the gravity because, you know, <laughs> your gravity is going to become so infinite that you're going to compress to potentially a microscopic atom yourself and that's not survival by the human condition. Um, you would also then have to worry about the fact that every item in space would be fourth dimensional. So, yes, we exist in a fourth dimension right now, but then you have to think fifth dimension, right? So, two dimensional, three dimensional, fourth dimensional, and then the fifth dimension would be every single second of this travelling, right? So, where the item was, where the item is going to be, and where it is, would all exist at once. So, whilst you're travelling through time, the faster you travel through time, the more extreme this would become. So, you know, example, that ball would be that matter for a normal time travel, or that matter for a longer time travel. So, the whole of space time and everything that exists would be moving constantly. And because you're moving faster than light, you would essentially be blind. You wouldn't see any of this. So, yeah, it would be rather complicated and difficult to actually traverse unless you knew exactly where everything was and is at the same time and where it's going to be and be able to map out a course through all of that that's automated because, you know, if you're travelling faster than you're used to operating, unless you've got a bubble of time that exists with you, so you've still got a bubble of fourth dimensional time so you can actually move and touch buttons and do things, um, your brain just won't be able to conceive it and you won't be able to operate the machinery to change and decelerate and re-enter space-time. And that would cause some serious issues. And even then, even if you were able to do all of that, to re-enter space-time after you've left, you know, with all of these forces acting against you, um, re-entry? Think of re-entry back into a planet, you know, catching the right angle, catching the right deceleration. To come back into space-time with an infinite gravity, you would be coming back in at such a force that you would have to be somewhere completely empty and have such a large deceleration to be able to survive really entry into space time so while you might be able to leave space time you might never actually be able to return in that sort of scenario so that would be pretty difficult and that's probably why time travel as a concept just doesn't work and it doesn't exist now there are ways around this but very complicated ways and the only way that it would work around is on for example I'm just going to say a time cop scale, but, you know, it's not time cop, but where you've built a machine that enables time travel, but only to the point where time travel was invented, because that machine would be required in order to facilitate time travel. And the only way that facilitate time travel that would work is through teleportation. So we would have to actually be able to teleport matter before we could ever do it. So to break something down into a data stream, then data streams could potentially be shot out of the time stream and back in and reincorporated because, you know, the compression of a data stream would not be as bad as someone being compressed to a molecule. You know, a data stream gets compressed, it can be decompressed. But if you compress the person to a, the size of an atom, then they're kind of both. You know, so yeah, we'd have to first be able to create teleportation and then have the technology to know exactly what you're looking for in a data stream to decompress it back to a state where you could recreate it. And then from there, you know, teleportation would come from the future. But then you've got paradox problems where at the instant that you've created time travel, um, you know, you then have the future sending back perhaps technology and information that shouldn't exist from the future so that it becomes back to the present and then that creates paradoxes where, you know, we would not have been sending that data if this didn't exist and then we wouldn't even create them at that point because we already have it so they would send in fact different data back which would be even more technologically advanced and then, you know, it's a paradox loop. And 
Then there's the problem as well that maybe any machine that could speed up molecules or a transmission to exceed the speed of light would emanate like a black hole. Just time would slow down in an emanating circle from the point of a time machine, where it would freeze time essentially, so time would be completely frozen at the point of creation of a time machine, and emanate outwards like a bubble that would envelop the whole planet and freeze the whole planet. And again, you know, maybe at that point you could create a time machine that would send back a bomb for to the first time machine to prevent this happening, and this would cause it to explode. So, you know, the first time a time machine created would then explode inexplicably for no reason, but you'd find out that it's actually from a time stream in the future to prevent the time bubble slowing down, but then that creates its own paradox where a time machine would still have to be created in order to send back the bomb to blow it up. But then you'd also have to think about blowing up the time machine that you send back the time bomb to the first time machine to blow it up as well. So both explode at the same time to save the planet from its own extinction through being frozen in a time bubble. So, you know, it'd be complex issues there. But, yeah, just as a whole, the concept of time travel is not right because... You know, we're a linear race, we exist linearly in time, and if you escape space-time, you know, maybe you're stuck outside of space-time in a bubble with, like, a heat bubble that is what's left of your time and it dissolves as you're out there until, you know, you're just frozen outside of space-time, maybe. But, yeah, if you want to travel through time, the actual implications it's just not morally right to do so. You know, maybe you could eventually find ways around it, but to do so, you'd create your own problems. And yes, you know, maybe you can find out the future of the human race and the future of things, but also what would come through, you know? Would it be technology? Would it be people from the future? Would it be food? Would it be supplies? Would it be warnings? And what warnings? would these effects have, you know, if you think maybe you stop one catastrophe but you could create ten more in advance just by knowing about it. So, you know, the actual whole concept of time travel is a very dangerous one. It's a very, very difficult thing, you know. If you change one minor thing, who knows what the knock-on effect of that is? You know, there's nobody on Earth intelligent enough to know every knock-on effect from every single instance. So, just changing minor things, it's not good. And that's why precognition would also be terrible for you, unless you have very, very minor precognition, a very minor, you know, the odd event. If you knew every single thing that was going to happen to you, you would just go insane and, you know, would you change things? Could you change things? It would just be very dangerous and would changing the things you want to change actually have a detrimental effect on the things you don't want to change and the things you want to keep. Because, you know, you could not perceive what would be the consequence of doing X and doing Y, you know, maybe by doing X you thought you would be helping Y, but in natural fact you create Z and lose Y entirely. And, yeah, just inventing time travel as a whole would ruin <laughs> everything for the humanity because, you know, just through its existence, everything would change and the future would change so much that anything coming back from the future would be in such a flux state, you know. We get some information, but then it would change, and then it would change, and then it would change, and that even alone would probably be enough to just explode perhaps a time machine. Just the paradox state would be enough for any time machine that ever exists to just not exist. It would fail, it would blow up, because any information sent through a time stream like that would just erase <laughs> itself, you know. It would just contradict itself. It would be terrible. And there's no way to actually get that to work and settle unless it was kept completely secret and not used, you know. 
you'd have to not use the information or not use any technology that comes through a time travel. Um, that's the only way that it would perceivably work is if it had no effect and was completely useless. So, yeah, uh, I don't see why people pursue time travel when it is such a terrible and complicated thing that it would be pointless. There are better endeavours than to try and change time. Because if we went back and changed time, you know, for example, we stop Hitler early, who's to say that you don't get ends up with a worse Hitler? Who's to say that, you know, because there was a big support in Germany and that for him, you know, if Hitler died earlier, without the big war and without all of the war. And maybe someone even worse would have come along and took over, it's like ISIS, you know, they tried to stop all of this early and then all these other terror organisations still all coming up, so, you know, maybe it would have been better to just let them run their course rather than try to intervene too much. And yeah, so, anyway, <laughs> like time travel, this could be a very complex thing, so we're just going to leave it here, so thanks for watching, just go small, goodbye.